One of the questions that I wanted to address with all three of you, I'll start with you, Jerry, is if we're going to solve the growing population issue, because as we look at it now, it is not stopping. I mean, our population is growing rapidly. What needs to be involved that is not today? So from an agricultural standpoint, what needs to be part of this? It's just not getting enough attention today. Well, I think going back to one of the things that is working but isn't working everywhere in the world is that uh, I I think agriculture is a very diverse and decentralized business. It's hundreds of millions of people making individual decisions around the world, and every ecosystem is, um, is a little different. So this isn't one of those things where there can be direction from on high on how to go ahead and do it. Um, we need to step up uh, extension in many parts of the world, especially the developing world. There is, there is a knowledge gap. We, we ought to have more policy that de-risks some investment, especially for the world's smallest farmers. They could make significant improvements that would make a big difference in hunger and make a big difference in poverty. Uh, And they know how to do some of these things, but they're too risky to effectively do them right here. And then finally, putting more choices, real choices, in the hands of farmers so that they can make more decisions locally uh, that fit them. I I think those are the things that, and, and all these happen fairly well in some places in the world. The U.S. would be one example, and it would be an example I would give on where government has done well. They've really encouraged innovation in this country. <laughs> Glenn, what, what, what do we need that we don't have now? Right, what's missing? It's a great question. I would say two things, and just thinking about this conference uh, as, a, as an example. Um, number one, it's not just climate change. It's not just carbon. Uh, absolutely, we need to decarbonize the economy, but there are, other, there are other key sustainability issues that you need to address at the same time. We're talking about them here, water, sustainable agriculture. Um, land conservation. Um, so we need to be thinking about policies that integrate solutions to those things, and I think that, that's easy to say and hard to do. But I think in this conference, for example, having more content like this uh, is important um, as a, to, to diversify. Um, and, and also on the um, note of diversification, I think um, we need to broaden the conversation. Uh, so in this conference, for example, we talk a lot about China and India. We don't have uh, Chinese and Indian business leaders here, and they need to be, not only for what they're going to be doing in their own countries, which is significant, but they're also becoming global leaders. And I would add Brazil, Indonesia, South Africa. So a lot of what happens in Africa, in poor parts of South America, will be in the hands of Chinese entrepreneurs or Indian uh, business leaders, uh, not necessarily ourselves. So we need to broaden the conversation. That's a good point. Rich? I would say it's the... Um particularly with the rapid urbanization, it's the need for, you know, smart urban infrastructure, this idea of planning ahead. It's not, it's not just a hyperbole to say we're going to build 11 New York cities a year. I mean, it's, you look at places like China where they were literally a, a city that was a village 30 years ago is now a city of 15 million people. Right? So, so we are building cities from the ground up. We have the opportunity to build the infrastructure in an appropriate way um, to make it intelligent and instrumented so that it has the efficiencies and the uh, capacity to deal with this kind of growth. I think that's what's missing is, is the um, you know, application of that on a global basis. And I would say finally to you, Curtis, what do we need that is not more oil? Because we'll need that. <laughs> right. Well, I think one of the things that we need right now is a price on carbon. We need some price marker because tens of billions of dollars are being invested every year, and, and we have to get going on that. And, and we, you know, that, that's the, probably the single most important thing. Uh, we need to get to the future. So I was thinking about Bill's talking about not just doing less bad, uh, but we have to do less bad while we get uh, on, on the road. And, and so I think the key to that is we, we need to uh, start – using more natural gas. It's, I think it's, there's a natural tendency to push back on it because it looks like the oil business, and we're trying to get away from the oil business to the new world. But there is a, a bridge to the new world, and the, and the bridge will be built by natural gas, and we have to start getting on that. 